confirm with that is all. Oh, thanks, Devin. So we are recording. And to start us off, just to get a sense of the room and who we are, let's launch a quick poll uh, so we know what things are like, Devin. Can so, everyone see it? Yes, absolutely. Thank you. Our first question is how confident are you feeling about engaging at CSW this year? Okay, I see still coming in. We'll give it another minute. I think we have about 75% who have already participated and have put in their answers. So Devin, if you'd like to share the results. So I see 31% are very confident, about 58% somewhat confident, and 10% not really confident. So hopefully today's session helps everybody um, to get to that somewhat or very confident stage. Um, and we'll see how it goes. But to start us off today, I'd like to invite our forum co-chairs, Rosa and Pam, uh, to give us a quick welcome. Rosa and Pam, the floor is yours. Thank you so much. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Buenos dias, buenas tardes, buenas noches. Welcome everyone to this important advocacy training at the NGO CSW Forum 66, which we've uh, really just started. And um, we're also celebrating our 50th anniversary so um, we're glad for that. Thank you so much for being here. For me, this is a core constituency here to prepare for a core activity, which we as NGO CSWNY have strengthened, and that is advocacy. And we are writing the good vibes from our consultation day on Sunday. If you missed it, I recommend you take a look and um, listen in on the panels that we had. We had the chair of the CSW, Ambassador Joyini, the head of UN Women, Sima Bahus. We also have Lopa, who we have here today. And we had a wonderful panel on feminist action on climate justice. And these important issues, we need to continue to advocate for. We need to keep continue to push at the UN. Um, it is so important during this time um, with everything that is happening around the world. All these issues are interrelated, peace and conflict with climate change, disaster risk reduction, having a safe and healthy environment because we know all issues are women's issues. So welcome today. We have a great program. Thank you for being here. And I'll hand over to my wonderful co-chair, Pamela Morgan. Pamela, I Excuse me, I'm sorry. Okay. Yeah. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. I am so pleased to be with you. And I appreciate you being here. Thank you. This is going to be a life-changing session because what you get here from this talented group, dedicated group of women, you'll be able to carry with you for with your advocacy for the rest of your life. This is going to be really life-changing because they're going to teach you what is advocacy, how you can implement it, 
how you find your key points, and then how you continue it. For this year, we'll start at NGOCSW, and then we'll go straight through to COP27 in Egypt, and then beyond. This is a topic that is critical to the life of the planet. So what better way to start a true advocacy than about something so important? So welcome, welcome to CSW 66, to the NGO CSW Forum, and let's do it. Thank you. Thank you, Rosa and Pam. That, that's a start. Um, I'd like to welcome now my, my partner in crime, Safira, to walk us through an overview of the agenda today and then take on a little bit of explanation on the CSW thematic issues. Thank you so much, Jillian. And yes, my name is Safira. Um, maybe just to add, I think Pamela has already kind of given you a sense of the agenda, but we'll go through some of the um, kind of the instruments um, and the, the framework for our advocacy. Um, we'll hear a little bit about how each of us can um, be an advocate and what the, the opportunities to engage will be. We will hear from our chair of NGOCSW and LOPA from UN Women, as mentioned, to give us a sense of the state of play right now. Um, we'll hear from our advocacy and research group about the outcome document process, strategic engagement, and um, just kind of language, language to watch and how to prioritize our time. We'll hear about methods of work. And then again, as we did yesterday with the orientation session, we'll open up to any questions that you might have. So this is an opportunity for, um, as you're thinking about how to engage in these next two weeks or any questions about the presentation, there will be time at the end for you to ask, ask questions. So I am going to begin um, with just kind of grounding us in some of these in, um, international instruments. So if we can head to the next slide, this is really as any advocate um, to be strong, um, to be strong advocates, to really know the language and know the instruments well and to ground ourselves in the framework. So I'm just going to talk us through for this particular CSW and on these priority themes, which many of you by now will be familiar, the priority theme on climate, environmental and disaster risk reduction policies and programs, and also on the review theme of women's economic empowerment in the changing world of work. Um, the very first framework, which I think many of us will be familiar with, but just to remember, if we head to the next slide, uh, is the human rights framework. And gender equality is at the very heart of human rights and United Nations values. And equality and non-discrimination are fundamental principles of the UN Charter, which was adopted in 1945. So when we're talking about um, working within the human rights framework for gender equality and women's rights, you can see the list here, the treaty-based bodies and the charter-based bodies. I won't go through all of them, but many of you will be familiar with the likes of CEDAW, um, you know, the Human Rights Council, the um, being able to draw on that. And so we're, we're looking at reforming discriminatory laws and policies which allow gender-based discrimination and bring them into line with international human rights law, as well as transforming discriminatory social norms and harmful gender stereotypes into more equal social structures and power relations for all genders. So really this is a framework and, and human rights language that as advocates, we are all becoming very familiar with. Um, if we can go to the next slide, um, another framework just to highlight for this particular priority theme is the Sendai framework. And this is one that provides member states with concrete actions to protect development gains from the risk of disaster. And so this was endorsed by the UN General Assembly following the 2015 third UN World Conference on Disaster Risk Reduction, which was held in Sendai in Japan. And this framework works hand in hand with many of the other um, frameworks so with the SDGs that are that are here but it also works with the Paris Agreement on Climate Change, the Addis Ababa Action Agenda on Financing for Development. Um, so this is something as you move through the CSW to, to be familiar with, be familiar with um, the Sendai framework and also the gender dimensions of all of these. Um, and just to say a little bit about the Sustainable Development Goals 
um, which I think many of us are familiar with, these 17 goals are interlinked. They are designed to be the blueprint to achieve a better and more sustainable future for everyone. They also were set up in 2015 with the goal to be achieved by 2030. Um, so we're also looking for gender equality, not only in goal five, which is a standalone goal, but also women's empowerment throughout all of these 17 goals as we move towards the, the development agenda. If we head to the next slide, um, another framework um, to be familiar with is um, COP. Um, so the UN Climate Change Conference of the Parties is what COP stands for. The most recent one, which was held in Glasgow in Scotland last November, COP26. Um, so we had many youth, civil society, um, organizers, gender activists really playing a central role there, and they will continue to play a central role on the road to COP27, which will be held in Egypt this November. And governments are really being urged um, in the lead up to COP27 to submit more ambitious national climate action plans if we're to achieve carbon neutrality by 2050. And so we'll see beyond the CSW that there will be opportunity for youth, for gender equality activists um, to continue on, to continue organizing, to continue this conversation um, beyond the priority theme at the CSW in the lead up to COP. Um, so these are a few of the frameworks to keep in mind. It's very helpful to go back, to check the language, to be familiar with what they are saying, and to really think about the gender dimension of all of these and what can be contributed to the discussion here at the CSW as we move through the next weeks. I will hand back to Jillian. Thank you, Safira. So as you can see, Safira has kind of given us the building blocks of the advocacy. What is the, what, how we should be thinking, what's already existing, what can we draw on? So it now comes uh, to the next part is what kind of advocate do I wanna be? How do I be an effective advocate and more importantly, what space has NGO CSW created for, for me to be able to do this advocacy? So if we can go to the next slide, let's start with saying that one wants to be a digital advocate. This is a very public, a very far reaching format is to use social media, uh, amplify your message. You can ask more people to join, raise the level of debate in the virtual space. In fact, we ourselves are using this, message, this method right now. Um, if you don't already know, we've submitted six recommendations to member states. We've shared these six recommendations across all of our social media channels. You can find it in a simple graphic uh, with an easy statement. You can find a one-pager version, which I encourage you to lean on. Um, to use for your talking points. It's also loaded in video form. So you can support it, you can share it, you can make your own video. It's about spreading the message. Um, we also have Civil Society Connects. Um, let's talk about what that actually means. It means partnerships, right? If, if none of us can do this alone, we can't go um, and change the world alone. We have to do it in partnership with other, other colleagues, other organizations. The best way to do that is attend parallel events, attend side events, um, find like-minded people, raise your hand, use the chat box, um, start making those connects to be able to work together in partnership, which is an SDG in itself, but always uh, sometimes forgotten, though imperative. NGO CSW for your use and for your help is also hosting conversation circles. What's a conversation circle? It's, it's a conversation on a topic within a smaller group. It helps you to find allies in your circle. In fact, we have two conversation circles happening today, uh, one immediately after this call at 10 a.m. and one later at 4 p.m. I think uh, Devin will be happy to share this in the chat box. You can register. Uh, join again, you're finding your space, you're finding your people, you're raising your voice. If you feel more that you'd like to engage in uh, the political debate, the political system, changing um, the methodology of how we do things, talking to member states, you can participate in a virtual Vienna cafe. 
uh, where we have smaller groups of people, uh, where we meet with member states and talk specifically on issues around the theme, around uh, the outcome document and how we can engage with member states. Um, if that's in not, not enough, but you prefer a more national or global platform, uh, you wanna influence policy, you wanna meet your country's delega uh, delegation, uh, look at the list of side events which exist on the UN Women website. Those are side events being held by member states. They will give you an idea of how to navigate the system um, and how you can make an impact. If you wish to know about the outcome document, where it's at, what's going on. Uh, we're kindly joined today by Lopa Banerjee, who will in fact share some of these details, but lean also on the work done by our team. And we will be joined by Susan and Erica Ivy a little later to help you understand where we are at, the work we've done and how you can use some of this work. Um, last but not the least, we'd like to give you a sense of how to find your feet virtual or in-person, right? Choose your level of engagement. Choose wisely because time is limited. Do you wanna be at a global, a national, a local or a virtual space? And use your energies accordingly. Um, put your efforts there accordingly. I have no doubt you've come prepared. The first poll showed that, but I'm grateful that you have come prepared or you feel prepared because there's a lot of work to be done and we can only do it together. But for now, um, I'm going to stop here and hand over to Puri, who will talk a little bit more about uh, NGO CSW, ways to engage and CSW along with Lopa Banerjee, who is the Executive Coordinator for Generation Equality and the Director of the Civil, uh, Civil Society Division at UN Women. So welcome Lopa, welcome Huri. Well, it is Huri, I hope you don't oh. mind. <laughs> it's okay, because we are, we are still waiting for Lopa to join us and I'm sure she's on her way. There's probably traffic. <laughs> We, you know, we used to use excuses like that, but we can't anymore. But um, yes, I will definitely fill you in on all the information on why NGO CSW and why CSW and everything. And I will also answer some questions. I hope you can start putting it in the chat and my team will flag it to me because I don't know if I can watch and talk at the same time um, and hope that Lopa will join us. Now, what I will say, is that there is a UN Women briefing at 1.15 p.m. today, and we'll give you the link on that one as well, so you can join us. Lopa will definitely be there. Aja Ragnar, the second in command at UN Women will be there, and we are hoping that the chair of CSW will be there. As of last night, she was still confirmed. Now, what I can tell you is that it is possible Lopa was pulled into a meeting and she's not even looking at her phone to respond to my messages. So that is possible, right? This is CSW, negotiations are happening right now um, or statements are happening right now, ministers are in town um, and that really keeps everybody on their toes. The missions that we work with, and I'll get into this a little bit later as well, for example, we work directly with um, ambassadors and their team in each of the missions, and we organize advocacy, we organize virtual Vienna Cafe, we organize all kinds of events. And then, of course, once their ministers are here, who are their bosses, we lose their attention. But here we are. Okay, let me just tell you why NGO CSW first. I know for most of you, that's why you're here, you know it, but I just like to put it into a framework. So the Commission on the Status of Women is an important part of UN and for feminists and gender equality, obviously. And we've always said it's one of the largest gatherings because women matter and women are activists and women show up. And member states, most member states do like that civil society and activists are 
putting their feet to fire and, and expecting them to really deliver on promises. So it's one of the reasons why I think CSW has always been one of the largest gatherings. And even though we're not gathering in person, we're, all, we're, all, we're still showing numbers in how we gather and we advocate. Now, last year, as I've said this before, and I'll just repeat it again, we did gather in large numbers and we realized numbers alone was not making a difference, right, in advocacy. So we, as you can see with our team and you will, he, he, you will hear later from our advocacy research group, we, we upped the ante. And I think we did amazing with our advocacy. And I wanna thank also the bureau because we, we were very lucky to, to have a very strong bureau who listened to civil society. Now, why do we do NGO CSW Forum? Because not everybody has access to UN and member states, right? So even if you were here in person, you had to be part of an ECOSOC accredited organization and an organization who gives you a grounds pass or signs you up through UN women to represent them at the UN. Some organizations are so large, they have hundreds of representatives, so they have to choose who's the most appropriate for this advocacy, for this CSW. So, so the numbers, it's a numbers game, right? So like how many people can have access to this? Our goal is to have unlimited access. Our goal is to bring as many voices, women, girls, widows, younger, older, trans, LGBTQI community, men who, who support feminist movements, Everybody's welcome on our forum. You don't have to be ECOSOC accredited. You just have to follow some of our rules. And we can explain that if you, if you actually read um, our safety guidelines, you'll see why we have some rules, right? Because if we don't have certain guidelines to protect everyone that's on this platform, we could not succeed. So we really ask people to pay attention to those guidelines. It's not to quiet you down. It's not to take the mic away from you. It's to make sure you are heard. All right, I think Lopa is coming. <laughs> anyway, um, so th those guidelines are really important and thanks, Devin. And of course it's not complete because sometimes people will not really approve of how we're approaching it and i understand that um and i hear you and i i you know give you the benefit of the doubt that your approach might be better than ours but we are a full team of global activists who have come together and figured out the best that we can do to deliver access to un and negotiations so um, the other thing I wanted to really address quickly is the levels of advocacy. So why parallel events? I'll jump around a little bit because it just makes sense in my head to explain it that way. Parallel events to me, and it, it is obvious, it's really important to global women and girl feminist activists is that it is an opportunity for you to have your own space, to have your own discussion that you're not just listening to me. And that anybody who hears me says, I talked enough, I don't wanna talk anymore, I'd rather listen. But sometimes obviously we all have to talk from the positions that we are. So it is the parallel event is an opportunity for you, your organization to have the conversation that you need to have and invite people to be in there. When, when um, governments, even private sector and activists get together, they say, we need to have more conversations about this, right? When you talk about conversations, it's all about moving the theme forward, learning from each other, joining the conversation in a way that actually uplifts you um, and the, the topic that is important. Um, and I want to welcome Lopa while I'm talking to welcome Lopa, please come on screen with me. And I am just giving a little background on NGO CSW, why we do what we do. So, <laughs> okay, to finish my thought, the 
parallel events is important to continue the conversation and to make sure everyone has access to that. So as you might have heard last year, we had about 700 events. This year, we're close to 780 events. And yes, you might have even heard that we sometimes deny certain applications. And the only reason we do that, it's not because of just the topic that they're talking about, it's the way they disrupt what it is that we're doing. And again, go back to our virtual um, guidelines to understand what we mean by disruption. When you are repeating something, when you are taking over an event with your own story, with your own, in a way that does not allow equal participation, equal conversation, that is a disruption. So I want to make sure that, um, let me see, I covered everything. Okay, so we do also have different levels of advocacy, right? So just having the conversation at the parallel event will inspire, will make you connect to people. I have heard many stories of people of finding partnerships, um, creating new coalitions, right? Um, all of that happens because we gather to have these conversations. But then there's also experts, experts who, has, who you will hear, people like Susan and Erica, who spend months and weeks gathering in meetings, um, bringing in information to actually make recommendations, solid recommendations that member states will have to pay attention to not just what I think personally, not just what I'm doing in my own organization, but presented in a way that actually moves the needle, that moves the subject forward. And that is another level. Then if you're becoming at that expert level where, you know, Safira was mentioning all of these documents that are important to read and know about before you start advocating even at CSW, because what we do is connected to SDGs. And, and this year, of course, with COP26, you need to understand how these documents are all connected so that you can present your statement to member states in a way that can be useful for them. I, um, in my past lifetime, I was a PR and marketing expert. And I always say, if you want to ask something of someone, you need to know what they need. You need to, you need to put yourself in their shoes and say, how can I say this that makes a difference to them, that moves their agenda forward so that mine also can be part of that. Um, and for that, we have created something called the Vienna Cafe, which activists have to apply to. And we work with global coalitions, other NGO CSWs, if you want to call it. We're not the only game in this world. There are so many amazing coalitions like the Women's Major Group um, who do who do wonderful stuff and we, we collaborate with them, right? Because my goal, as far as NGO CSW is concerned, and you've heard me say this a hundred times and I'm gonna keep saying, is to work in a collaborative, transparent shared leadership model because our fight is really strong. We need to keep fighting. And if we will, we, we need allies, right? We need to be together to really win um, in our fight. So there's the Vienna Cafe, which is really, um, for activists and experts who can come and really engage with each other. And we work to bring in the member states to have conversations with them so they can hear it directly from you. I'm gonna slow down a minute and I'm gonna bring Lopa on camera and hope she has a feeling of what I'm talking about. And then you'll get to hear what UN Women does on their side and then why we collaborate, right? We are a separate entity, we do our own thing, but we also collaborate because we hope to help UN women amplify their voices when they're advocating for gender equality and vice versa. Lopa, are you here? I am. Good morning, Huri. Good morning and greetings to everybody. Warm, warm, warm welcome to all of you, fellow activists and advocates a very warm welcome and thank you very much uh, for being here, for, for leading with your commitment and your activism. I want to start by expressing my deep, deep, deep solidarity uh, and to, to, the, to the women and people of Ukraine, including those who have fled their homes and are living away from their loved ones, 
those who have stayed behind to provide humanitarian support in the most devastating circumstances, and women human rights defenders and activists who are calling out continuously together with all of us uh, to say, end the war now. And I also want to offer solidarity and support not just in Ukraine, which is a devastating war that is unfolding now, but for all of the women and girls who have endured and continue to endure uh, other conflict situations, which are um, we, which continue in in so many many different parts of the world, and this is one of the most critical aspects that we would like to discuss in this uh, commission on the status of women. The Commission on the Status, the status of Women, as Huri would have already told you, is brings together the largest gathering of gender equality advocates anywhere, those from government and those from outside of government, to come together in discussions that are critical to the progress of half the world and therefore critical to the progress of the entire world. And this topic, this priority topic of gender equality in the context of climate is so critical at this point in time, because what is really important to focus on in, in, in the session is the interlocking crises of climate and gender inequality. And the fact that these two are, pro, pro, you are uh, the, the greatest uh, existential challenges of our time. And as you move forward in your advocacy, there are actually three aspects that UN Women has been focusing on and that we have been working with member states in the lead up to the CSW. Uh, you also, those of you who were able to join the amazing NGO consultation day on Sunday would have heard this also from the chair of the Bureau of the Commission on the Status of Women as well as the UN Women Executive Director and indeed from uh, uh, Ambassador Geraldine Byrne Nason as well that um, this aspect of the interlocking crises of, of economic justice, in other words, care, and the, the focus on the, the huge burden of care that women and girls have to endure in terms of uh, in climate uh, crisis situations and humanitarian crises, combined with uh, continuing and pernicious gender-based violence, combined with conflict, this interlocking crisis of, of, of climate care, conflict and violence is what needs to be focused on, looking at comprehensive and coordinated responses. That is what we want the agreed conclusions to focus on. The second point is to put women and girls at the center of solutions and responses to addressing the climate crisis, because women and girls are the most disproportionately affected by climate and environmental crises and disasters. And the third, that women and girls are taking climate and environment action everywhere. They are leading, but their voice, agency, and participation is under-supported, under-resourced, undervalued and underrecognized. And therefore, this together with the protection of women human rights defenders and climate justice defenders must be at the core of the agreed conclusions. And these are critical recommendations also coming out of the Secretary General's report. And so the, 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 the Commission will uh, hopefully work to build consensus among the governments of the world to push forward, secure and forward looking um, policy recommendations from the CSW. This is where your advocacy will be critical to work with delegations in through all of the spaces that Huri has outlined and that you will hear later on also in this advocacy um, gathering. In the lead up to the CSW, UN Women has been working to bring together uh, civil society together with uh, with states in the uh, and and uh, and this uh, 
um, uh, at, while the um, restrictions are quite severe with regard to COVID also and physical presence of uh, civil society in the corridors, nevertheless, um, you know, all, the, all those that now have ECOSOC accredited passes and who have got their passes are able to enter the UN building and find spaces to advocate outside of the conference rooms where negotiations will take place and limited numbers will be in the conference room as all of you know there are also civil society in delegations and so this connections building these strategic connections with those that are able to be in the room but then with those that are outside of the room to make those strategic connections to go forward because this topic is the first time that the commission will be discussing this and, um, and so we have the opportunity to really push for forward-looking um, uh, agreed conclusions. Um, as you already know, CSW will take place in a hybrid format, and, um, and, uh, and, and, but uh, um, time permitting, a number of CSOs in consultative status with ECOSOC will be able to make oral statements in the general discussion via pre-recorded video and also to intervene in the interactive dialogues in the session via Zoom and via uh, uh, um, uh, uh, virtual, through virtual modalities. Um, the, there are a number of side events that have been organized by member states uh, and of course the parallel events that are being coordinated by NGO CSW. We, uh, we will be uh, hosting the 24 hours of generation equality round the clock on the 16th of March and we urge you to join. There is a lot of information on the UN Women website. Please take a look at our social media package where you will also find guidance for how to uh, join the various side events and, um, and also uh, more information on the sessions. Let me stop here and turn it back to you, Huri, for how you, how you would like to take this forward. Absolutely. There are some questions. Where are the opportunities for advocacy that are available for the accredited organizations? Um, well, like Lopa said, even though the building is now open, the, the notice was so, so short that I know I'm hearing it from some people that we, they were not prepared to get in. But many organizations do have representatives, and you'll hear from some of them later, who can get in. Um, the other way is I sent two links. One is side events with member states who are, that are open for civil society. Look at the list. It's on the UN Women website, and we'll reshare the link again. Please join. And there, sometimes there's opportunity to even put your question or comments in the chat. And sometimes they might even open the mic for you. I can tell you, I am very um, satisfied this year with the number of member states that are working with us. So I, and that's partly because of all the work we've done and the work that UN Women has done for on our behalf as well for civil society. They have been fighting to really unmute our mics as well. Um, so um, I, I wanted to just mention two things. As we speak, there's another training happening with OHCHR for the for for the way gender uh, for 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 folks to really engage at UN, not just at CSW, but the overall human rights. There's going to be a repeat of that at 4 p.m. today. The reason I mentioned that is because there's there's a rich opportunity of engaging at so many different levels. Take your time on the portal, just click on things, have conversations, and join as many events as you want. Um, and then if you are an expert and you do want to join conversations with member states, send an email to info and we'll consider having you join us at the Vienna Cafe as well. Um, and the last thing I want to say is that at 1.15 p.m., Lopa and her team will be part of um, what's called the UN Women Briefing. It's, it's a much deeper conversation. It's a, and then we're hoping that the chair of CSW will also be there. And that conversation is going to be quite interesting. We'll dive deeper and we'll unpack everything that is happening specifically with CSW 66. So please do join us. We'll add that link here as well uh, at 1.15 p.m. today. Um, 
Let me see. I think that's it, Lopa. I don't know if there's anything else that comes to mind. You really gave such a big umbrella picture of um, what happens. Yeah, I just want to say, I think there are some questions about whether you and women uh, side events are open. So uh, Rosa has already put it on the on the chat. I want well, you the, the, the you and the registration is up. If you register, uh, for, uh, you are able to attend. This uh, is uh, the side events. Uh, so some of the side events have platform restrictions in terms of numbers, but there's the, the, the platforms are large enough for that. I would also uh, urge you that the Secretary General will address will uh, the CSO Town Hall that will take place also on the 16th. So please uh, join. That is also um, an open platform and you will be able to join once uh, you register for that. So that will be a great opportunity. The dialogue will be moderated by the UN Women Executive Director. And uh, indeed, this, uh, this, this afternoon, um, uh, that we would be in a conversation, a sort of a continuing of the conversation that took place already with the chair and the uh, and the executive director of UN Women, as well as the previous chair of CSW uh, at the NGO consultation day. Um, and indeed, we can dive in a little bit more or deeper into some of the critical issues uh, for advocacy uh, 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 during the CSW. Over. Thank you. Um, and there's also a youth um, briefing on Friday at 8 a.m. Oh, tomorrow's town hall with Secretary General is at 10 a.m. And I'll find the link and share that as well. And then we also have another briefing next week on the negotiations. Again, all of this information, we have sent MailChimp as well with all the um, uh, all the events that we have scheduled, we are trying to be as organized and easy access as possible, but there are a lot of events and we hope to really address different, different populations, interests and needs, right? So there's a, a, you don't have to attend all of these, but you can pick one or two that is really important for you and attend them. Um, any other questions that I'm not seeing, team? I, think um, of I just wanted to say goodbye, uh, Huri. I need to leave. I have uh, another meeting that I'm getting to, but I wanted to thank everyone and have a wonderful CSW. And thank you so much for your leadership and your activism. And we will see each other both virtually and possibly for those of you who are in the corridors possibly physically as well over the next days. We're, we're um, going to do our best. Thanks, Lopa, and see you at 1.15. Yes, thank you so much. Bye-bye. Thank you, bye. So here's, here's the last thing I want to say is that it is unfortunate that we are so tied down with our virtual yeah. portal is that many of us can't even access the UN right now. Um, and, and, you know, we can sit here and complain but we do the best we can. I've reached out to my networks and said, if you have anybody on the ground with the annual pass show up to the UN, they're handing out tickets to all of the conversations that are happening. And if you are in New York City and able to access um, UN, please do and represent us all and speak up if your mic is unmuted for you. Um, otherwise, I do believe what we're doing virtually is still very important. Um, I am committed to making sure that the events on the portal go smoothly and the parallel events conversations continue. As you know, many of them are recorded and people keep sharing them. So yeah, in, stay put, engage, and don't give up on this fight. Thank you, Huri. That was wonderful. And Lopas gave, you know, an information overload to all of us. And thankfully, we have websites where we can keep track of all of this. So thank you so much to both of you. Uh, completely understand the time crunch all around and also the limited time within which we can, uh, you know, pack in so much and all that we're trying to do. So before we move on, um, I'd like to run another quick poll just to check in on how everyone's doing because it is a lot to take in. Um, so Devin.
So your question one is how engaged are you with the negotiation process? Uh, Huri talked about it, so did Lopa. And the second question is, will you try to meet your government's delegation during CSW? I see a little more than half of you have already responded. We'll give it another minute. Give everyone a chance to reply. Great, so we have everyone's response. And here are the results. I think it's pretty obvious to see where we are, where we are and where we need to go. So thank you so much for that. And with that, I would like very much to introduce our next group. These are the women who have been the backbone of all our research advocacy, the recommendations that we talked about. And I am more than happy to give space to the lovely Ivy, Susan and Erica. These ladies have come up with, have done all the research and advocacy, which you see out, which comes for our recommendations. So Ivy, Susan, Erica, the floor is yours. Can you, can you hear me? Yes, yeah. absolutely we can. I can I'm see going you to, as well. I'm gonna start um, uh, this uh, talking. I just want to say one thing though, for people. Just make sure, you have to realize member states make decisions. We don't, but they do, all right? UN entities like UN women, they run a lot of it, organize a lot of it on the, um, on the UN, UN side, but NGOs are extraordinarily important. And we're important because we have a lot of expertise. We have a lot of courage and make a lot of noise. Um, we, I, I think, well, we're on the ground. They're not, they're in their offices and we're on the ground. Um, and I like to think that we have a lot of um, moral courage. Okay, so I'll stop there, but that's really important. The next thing I wanna say, what I learned in consultation day from the Irish ambassador was strategy strategy. You've got to think more strategically. And that's what ad advocacy, re the research group, tried to do this year. Okay, could I have the first slide? Or do I do that? Mm -mm. Can you hear me? Yes. For yes. All right. So Erica and I, no, we want, oh, uh, we want the first slide with the um, terms, not the process. Could you go to the previous slide, please? Yes. Okay. So I do the top line. Erica does the bottom line. Oops. Go back <laughs> to the slide. I have, don't have the slide memorized. There. Now, just stay there for a few minutes. Okay. Now, the priority theme, you all know. And this is what it is all, the whole conference is organized. Achieving gender equality and the empowerment of all women and girls in the context of climate change, environmental and dis disaster risk reduction policies and programs. Excellent priority theme, but what I love that the working group on girls said, where is the urgency? Enough said on that. Moving expert group meeting papers. Those are the papers that come out of a group that UN Women put together in the fall that get us all started. There's so much you can learn on the UN Women website. All the papers are there and they're based on, so we learn more about the priority theme. The SG report, well, that comes out in December and it sort of sets the tone for the um, uh, for the uh, NGO uh, for the whole forum. Um, now, 
this year, I, I thought it was so, so tentative, but enough about that. It was also interesting when you looked at the zero draft, how much language they took from the Secretary General report. CSW 66 Commission and Bureau, I think you know that the commission is um, made up of five member states. It's all regional. And it's also uh, was headed, it's headed by South Africa this year. And the Bureau is about 50 member states. But what's interesting is that in negotiations, all of the member states, they all negotiate. Member states, well, you know what that is by now. There, how many are there? Oh, 193 member states. And um, some really um, are very progressive about women and some are not. Vienna Cafe, um, I think there's information in the chat about that. We decided to do that, to put together um, member states with NGOs. And we did it last year, we're doing it this year. And it is a, it is a site where we can get together virtually and talk about the negotiations. We just started, had one last week, and it was very successful. Erica, you get the second line. Thanks, Susan, and good morning or good afternoon, everyone. Um, just so you understand this, these terms aren't in any particular order, so don't try to um, figure out any line of thought here. We're just making sure that you understand some of these terms that are being um, thrown around during CSW, one of which is the zero draft, um, which is the document that is being negotiated during CSW. Um, we all start with the zero draft. It's prepared by member states, the secretariat, um, and the facilitators who chair the negotiations uh, with input from UN women. Um, the zero draft is distributed to all of the member states and observers, um, and they then begin to, to focus in on what they want to see included and not included. Um, you can download the zero draft for CSW 66 by going to UN Women's CSW website. Okay, so that's that. Um, precedent language um, is something that is uh, very well respected at the UN. It helps um, keep the UN on a, a stream of thought um, and consistent. So they're building on other decisions and recommendations and reports that have been made by the UN um, in new documents that are agreed to. So the precedent language is often included in the CSW um, outcome document or agreed conclusions. Um, the text agreed, sorry, I've just, um, we're flicking back between Susan and I, so I'm not sure what's happening there, but um, the report um, that's delivered by the Secretary General um, before the zero draft is released is considered to be precedent language. Um, research conducted under a mandate by the UN is considered to be precedent language. Texts agreed by UN bodies, um, such as UN resolutions are considered to be precedent language. So in our advocacy, we work really hard to find precedent language when we're trying to recommend something to the governments to include in these documents, because that's what's most easily accepted by all of those governments. And so we try to work um, within that system to get our, our positions forward. Um, next we have public delegates. So civil society representatives are invited by member states to participate in the zero draft negotiations. I don't think all, but many, many of the governments do include and are encouraged to include civil society representatives in their negotiating teams. Um, Rev one. So Rev one is the first version of the zero draft um, that is um, negotiated by the member states. So the zero drafts put out that member states put their recommendations um, in, and then those are included and revised. The zero draft is revised and that becomes Rev one. Um, there's further negotiations and we get Rev two and Rev three. So it, it's an ongoing process, but that's what that means. It's revision version one, basically. Um, and last but not least, we end up with an outcome document. 
Um, so that is the final version of the zero draft that the governments have come up with and negotiated and spent two weeks, you know, more than that really, because they start before CSW even begins. Um, but that's what we end up with. And then it's voted on and it's the um, agreed conclusions. I think that covers all of our terms there, Susan. Yep. Um, if we wanna just jump to the next Okay, slide. next slide. Anyone out there? Next slide. Thank you. Thank you. Uh -oh. I think it's just lagged a couple of seconds. Uh, yeah, it's a little slow. Thank you. Uh, okay. Apologies okay. for being in the dark. I, I hadn't checked my camera, but anyway, here we are. Okay. Oh. Um, so let's see. Um, in this one, how do we do it? Um, I'm doing the left. <laughs> yes. Okay. So you start. Right, so, so you do the left and I do the right, yes. Correct. So um, the NGO CSWs around the world, um, of which there are seven um, in all the different regions, and we have one in Vienna and Geneva, um, have come together and, and sent representatives to a group called the Advocacy Research Group. Um, and we have been working since July or maybe June, um, researching the priority theme for CSW 66. So we've been researching the overlap of gender and climate change and um, been looking at major reports. We've been looking at um, research. We've been looking at um, UN precedent language. We have a researcher who helps provide us with wonderful um, background information about precedent language in the UN system regarding the priority thing. So we, we meet, we each read different reports, we share our information with each other. So that's a really extensive sort of grounding background information process that we go through and highly recommend it. I mean, anybody who wants to be an advocate should really understand what they're talking about. Um, so doing some reading in advance is helpful. Okay, Susan, over to you. Okay, so um, I, I wanna say how important um, it, being global was this year. This is the first time we've, what? This is the first time that um, we've been um, global. And so as we work together, there's so many perspectives that come, to get, that come together and enrich our discussions and our decisions. All right, so because I had done this last year or we had done it last year, Eric and I, and we felt that we were not successful we decided we had to have a different approach and not give up. And so what we did was we picked out um, uh, about 10 permanent missions and we went to them and said, you help us, help us do better with advocacy work. Now we started these meetings, um, what, what was it, September, October? We started October, I think. We started them very, very early. How can we be more effective? And they told us in no uncertain terms. All right, what you send to us cannot be pages and pages and pages. Keep it short, keep it concise, pointed. What do you want in terms of recommendations? And please don't give it to us in February. We would like it in December. First, send it to the Secretary General. Don't be shy, get your recommendations out, send them to the Secretary General. Then UN Women, and then the, the bureau, the um, CSW bureau, starting with the chair. Uh, and, um, oh, and, and don't, Ireland told me don't poke. And they, although the US told me to poke, um, which means <laughs> be diplomatic. Please be diplomatic. I mean, don't go just angry and whatever. And so we took um, what they said um, and we got it out in December, uh, the Secretary General received it and that was exciting. UN women actually said they loved it. Um, and um, we then sent it out to all member states. And it was so exciting. There were about, how many Erica's? Maybe six or five that said immediately, this is going to be useful in negotiations. Oh, that was exciting. Okay, <laughs> back to you. Okay, thanks. Um, so as a group, we identified recommendations um, 
that aligned with this global perspective of all the people in the room, which your organizations may be doing independently. Lots of NGOs um, around the world come up with what they think are the really important things within the priority theme that they wanna push forward and they wanna see in the agreed conclusions. So that's what we did as a group um, and you may be doing too. That's really all I have to say on that. <laughs> Thanks. Well, Susan, we, um, we, we sent the recommendations out um, and we got, as we said, some very good responses. You know, there is something called the blue book the UN Blue Book, and you can get everybody's address on it. If you just go UN Women's, UN um, Blue Book, you will get um, uh, uh, emails for all, and also phone um, uh, numbers for all of the um, member states. Next. Thanks. So that was all kind of achieved in uh, December so that everyone had our input prior to actually finalizing actually prior to the Secretary General's report coming out and prior yeah. to the um, zero draft coming out. Um, so then we got to work on developing briefs to support each of our six recommendations and also collecting information from our um, youth within our team um, on their perspective because they have a unique perspective. And so we wanted to highlight that. So we have a separate brief on um, youth perspectives. And these briefs include Precedent, precedent language, which I discussed in the terms. Um, also examples of good practices, um, places where laws are particularly supportive of the recommendation that we're putting forward, things that detract from government's ability to achieve the recommendations that we were putting forward. So just some really good background information, precedent language and examples for governments to use in their negotiations on the zero draft. Susan. All right. Um, this next one on the right, we actually reviewed and evaluated the SG report in December. Oh, no, wait a minute. When did it come out? Uh, Jan January, I think. Um, and um, as soon as the agreed conclusions, the zero draft came out, we were all over it taking a look. And we were quite disappointed, I must say, by both of them. Next. So now we're in the, the final version, <laughs> the final stages where we're trying to um, keep having input into the negotiations. This is really the toughest part. Um, and it's why we started so early this year and would recommend anybody advocating um, start early is because once they go into these negotiations, everybody's so crazy and working so hard and staying up like late into the night that it, it, it is really hard unless you have somebody on one of the government negotiating teams or access to them or a special relationship with your mission um, representatives at the UN, it's very tough to, to get in there and have your voice heard. So um, we are um, doing a big media campaign in the hopes that we get a groundswell of, of advocates um, working with us. Um, there's a virtual, um, video challenge out there right now. So if you go to um, Facebook and look at um, NGO CSW, there's lots of ways that you can engage in, in social media and our recommendations are part of that. So um, the next slide is gonna show you all of our recommendations. Um, so next slide. Um, so, oh, you're gonna do the, the first three, but let, you go Don't take these and lead with them. Oh, and one thing I wanted to say, um, the US now, um, we had a briefing last week and they named public delegates. And so this is, and the public delegates this year know something. In the past, they haven't always known things, it seems to me, but this year they absolutely splendid. So if your country has public delegates, and you are concerned about getting something in the zero draft, they're the people to go to, immediately sent them, um, or the two I know, um, our, our recommendations. Okay, you take the first three. Right. Okay, I mean, you can see them here on the, the screen. Um, these are available on the NGO CSW New York website, also with the briefs that I mentioned um, for each one of them. If you wanna look at them, use them in your own advocacy, learn from them, whatever. Um, th this is put forward from our global group as the important 
um, issues that we wanted to see included um, in the agreed conclusions. So the women's leadership um, is really about um, governments making sure that women are included in decision, decision making, also implementation and monitoring um, of gender responsive policies regarding climate. Um, uh, the second one is strengthening women's resilience to disasters. So that's about strategies to reduce disaster um, and increase resilience, especially for women who are dependent on natural resources for their well being and livelihoods. We know that 70% of the world's food is produced by women. So there are a lot of women being severely impacted by um, these disasters. I mean, in many ways other than farming, but also there so that, that the policies that are being developed should focus on these women and these um, the work that they're doing. Uh, the third one is disaggregated data. So this is a really important and cross cutting issue. If we aren't collecting the data, we're never gonna be able to address the problem. So this is about collecting gender disaggregated data on displaced girls and women um, so that effective climate induced migration policies can be um, generated. Okay, I want to say um, all of this is if you go to NGO CSW and you look at the advocacy research, um, you click on that. This, these are um, abbreviated here. So the full, the recommendations are a little fuller. You can read the recommendations and the briefs and they have it so well set out. And so that if you're talking um, and doing with, um, with your government, we'd love it if you do some more ta um, talking about this. Okay, um, I'm gonna talk about um, the last three, or maybe I'll, um, yeah, I guess I'll do that. But I've, I've gotten some responses from member states on these, and I'm always so surprised at things that make them really angry and things they agree with. So let me just go. I'll do the last three and then maybe go back a little bit. Targeted education training on climate change. We're amazed that they never think about teaching the young about, about climate crisis. And so one of the, um, so we, we put one in there and then a good practice was um, in Kenya, this, um, in the schools, they have a wonderful um, education program um, on, on climate change. So, what in good practices, we're trying to say, okay, some countries have done it, so why don't you? Now, financing climate mitigation adaptation for women, if you look at the um, actual <laughs> recommendation, it's very much um, asking the global north to address the global south, the problem in the global south, because the global north has caused most of the problems. And now the global south is in, um, because of loans, um, is in, in terrible shape. So that should be addressed. There should be forgiveness of loans or um, uh, there should be no more loans, there should be grants, but that needs to be addressed. And it's interesting that this one is the one that I've, um, uh, I've got the most pushback and it seems to me the most in important. Um, ensuring women's land ownership and, and inheritance. This is really um, about also about farmers and that women produce so much of the food in the world, but they don't own, own the land and that needs to be addressed. It's also about widows. Um, because I work a lot on widows. Um, and so it's that widows um, have inheritance and, and uh, well, they have inheritance. Um, okay, just going going back. Susan, I think we're be out of some... time at this point. I, I think we oh, probably need um, to wrap it up. This, uh, let me just say disaggregated data um, that there's a big, big pushback. They don't want that in there. They don't want the um, compact on migration in there because they say some company, countries do not agree. Anyway, thank you so, so much, Susan and Erica. That's a lot. Thank you so much. But <laughs> I also yeah. want to give time to Ivy uh, so that we can give an overall. But I think the best we can ask for everyone is uh, to be able to use the work that you'll have done 
and maybe take it all from the website. So if I could ask Ivy to join the conversation, please. Yes, thank you. Um, Susan and Erica. Susan, Erica, for that, that very thorough coverage. Of, of all advocacy and research group. And um, I'm going to keep it short because there we wanted to leave time for Q&A and mm -hmm. we don't have much time. So um, I'm just going to mention the methods of work. I covered some of this already um, at the consultation day. So I'm gonna refer to my notes there uh, since it was um, brief. So the methods of work covers um, how the CSW is organized, its purpose, who takes part in it, and in what way, among many other things. And the last time it was reviewed was in 2018. UN Women organized an informal workshop for member states last year in September and asked civil society to join and share their key recommendations. I believe this is one of the few opportunities we've been given for such a space. And we brought together an ad hoc group of experts, academics, former UN staff and feminists to brainstorm in preparation for this workshop. Four civil society representatives spoke at that workshop and we compiled um, the summary of recommendations. And I wanted to share some of the things that it was calling for that civil society um, pretty united in this front, that there was a call for more transparency and for CSW to become uh, more relevant and to pave the way and set normative standards for gender equality and to take a more active role in holding all of the uh, UN systems accountable. And um, for CSW not to be a place to renegotiate past negotiations or a place to open up already agreed languages. So really, you know, um, urging member states to move forward. And um, so in February, Denmark and Costa Rica had approached NGO CSW around their unmute campaign. And uh, that was, an open hearing for methods of work. Again, another space for civil society to follow up and share even more recommendations. For the registration, uh, we actually asked everyone to send in their own recommendations, which we compiled into a document again, sent it again to all member states, 193 of them, um, for their input. There's been negotiations happening uh, already Actually, I believe they should have concluded by this past weekend. I was asking Maris for the latest update. I didn't get a response from him yet, but he's the facilitator of the negotiations. And um, that's it really for methods of work. Uh, very important, but um, definitely not an area that civil society is aware of enough. Thank you. You're absolutely right, Ivy, and thank you so much for sharing that. Uh, it often goes unnoticed. Um, and with that, I'd like to open the floor for questions um, because we have a few minutes left. So I invite Huri, Rosa, Pam, uh, Devin. Oh, I'm sorry, Devin had information to share as well. So sorry, Devin, if you'd like to come on and share some additional resources that we have available. No worries, I'll take two seconds. Um, so you have a couple of um, helpful resources available for advocacy um, at the UN, specifically in the context of CW. I'm putting it the link in the chat. So we have a um, advocacy guide that, excuse me, sir. Okay. Um, oh my goodness, Bruce Wayne. Come on, come on, come on, Bruce. <laughs> Sorry, okay. Um, so we have an advocacy guide that um, goes over um, pretty everything you need to know for advocating at the UN um, and CSW. It is available in Arabic, English, French, Spanish, and Russian. Um, all of those are available on that website that I sent. Um, in addition to this, we actually have an app that um, pretty much has all of the same information as the guide, 
but just um, compiled into a nice convenient mobile app. You can also find the link to download that app. It's available for the App Store and um, Google Play. Um, so if you have an Android or an iPhone, we've got you covered. And you can also download those in this link as well. Um, and, and actually the only other thing I'll mention is the Women's Human Rights Teaching, Learning, and Advocacy Resource. Um, this has um, a ton of different information about uh, different um, areas related to gender equality. And I have that link in the chat as well. So that's just um, a good place to learn about the topics that are available. Um, yeah, I think that's it. That's amazing. That was so quick and so good. So as, as you can see, there's so much of information out there and there is so much that you can use that we have created. So please feel free to lean on it, use it, um, share it as widely as you can. We're here for you. And with that, I'm going to open the floor for questions. So I'm also going to ask Huri, Pam, Rosa, and to Devon to stay um, on screen so that we can address questions that people have. If you have a question, please either raise your virtual hand or put it in the chat box. So we'll be more than happy to take your question. Great work, everyone. Jillian, thank you. <laughs> Safira, Susan and Erica, yes, keep engaging with everybody in the chat. It was such a rich presentation from our advocacy team. It just makes me so happy. Thank you all. I'm looking to see if there are any questions in the chat just now, uh, but I think Devin's covered most of it and so has Uri and all of you through the course of the session. So, I just give it a minute. Julian, <clears throat> there was a question by Trish Lorraine McCracken about connecting with your government's delegation. And she asked, how do we find out if there is a government delegation there? Every government, every member state from the UN should have a representative um, to the CSW. And so I put in the chat, the blue book link, um, and there you can find out which, you know, what country you're in, look up the contact information for the representatives in New York, the UN mission in New York, and just call it, write or ask, who is my delegation? Who's on my delegation? People can also do that from their own home country and contact their government and ask about who the delegation is. Sometimes it's, it's civil society. So if you're in touch with some women's groups who you know are very active with the CSW, they might have people they know who are on their delegation. Thanks, Rosa. If anyone sees hands up, please let me know. I'm not seeing anybody. There's a question in the chat by uh, Jody uh, Godfrey. I, I could say Erica and myself, but I don't know. Do you see that? 921, Jody Godfrey, American Medical Women's Association. Susan, go ahead if you need to answer the question. Go ahead. Oh, no, I'm just saying um, uh, uh, Erica and I, um, I'll put my um, email in the chat, Jody. Jillian, may I also just add one thing? I think it's really important and it will address some of the questions about Vienna Cafe as well. It really is important to find partnerships and coalitions and organizations to collaborate with. I'm not saying individuals can't make a difference. I think it's really important if you have a strong message and have a method that we haven't yet discovered yet. For example, um, with climate, you know that one young woman moved the world with her Fridays 
uh, of school. So, I mean, I don't need even need to say her name. So there are there are possibilities of one person moving the needle. But in my opinion, I think coalitions, partnerships, organizations coming together, just the way NGOCSW brings people together actually gets a little bit more attention. So join as many groups as you can and have, you know, and amplify your voices. So with Vienna Cafe, we work with coalitions who are experts in the specific topics as well. Like this year, the topic is climate. We worked with We Do. We worked with Women's Major Group, who's been following SDGs and COP20s, the COPs, let's say. Um, so it's really important. I actually am not an expert on climate. I don't even sit on the table with member states. I don't waste somebody else's seat by sitting there just because I'm the chair. I help organize. So, you know, give the seat to somebody who you think is an expert and then so that we can actually move the needle. Sorry. I see Claudia has a message uh, in private chat about the recordings. All of these sessions are recorded. They're all on the website. Uh, you can find them um, right there. Mm. Is it a good thing that we don't have more questions? We've covered so much. <laughs> um, Elizabeth Evans has another question. It was mentioned you need to apply to participate in the Vienna Cafe. How might we might we do that? I'm going to ask Rosa if she'd like to take that one. Sure, thank you for that. So the Vienna Cafe is really coordinated through major women's feminist constituency groups and the NGO CSWs in the region, Africa, Asia Pacific, Latin America and the Caribbean, um, uh, the MENA region, um, Geneva and Vienna. So if you're associated with one of those, also some of the major women's constituencies like the Women's Major Group, the Women's Rights Caucus, um, the gender and climate constituency because of the priority theme, um, the action nexus. So if you're not connected with those, if you will put your email in the chat, we will send you our uh, questionnaire um, so that we can um, look to see what area of specialty um, you're working in, um, what region you're from. Right now for the 16th, Vienna Cafe, which is tomorrow, is, is pretty full. And so it would be for the 23rd. And what we do is it's it's a different platform. It's not uh, Zoom, it's Remo, and you're in a small room with member states. So we have to have a good balance of representatives from member states and um, civil society. It would be five people in with one representative. It's very small kind of intimate conversations that you have, Chatham House rules, so that you can really get to some of those root questions and answers. So please put your email or send it to me directly in the chat and we'll send that questionnaire to you. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you Rosa. I see a question from Brenda also asking if you are in New York, how does that work? it still works in the virtual format for Vienna Cafe specifically. Okay, um, Huri, I'm gonna turn the flow back to you for closing because I'm not seeing any more questions. If I've missed any hands, please let me know. Um, otherwise, Huri, over to you. All right, I'm going to repeat what Devin said. Please do not put your email in the chat. It is hard for us to take your email and send you the form. Email us in info and we'll send you the form to fill out. Now, it is also very important. I want to end it on this note. It's very important to not give up on the national, local, national, and regional advocacy. We already do a lot of work, as you can see here on the global level. You are welcome to join us. Your, vo your voices need to be heard here as well. But if you are coming from Asia Pacific, from Middle East, from South, Afri South America, Africa, any region that you're coming from, 
come with your local, national, and regional work. Do not go straight to the global level. That's one of my advice that I will give you. Um, so it's really, really important to start getting active in your own village, in your own, you know, where the city if that you're in. Um, we, because we are in the headquarters in New York, we actually work very closely with the US mission, if we're allowed. A few years, we were not. Um, so it's really important that you all do the work at your level as well, and then bring it to the global level. I hope that was like a good ending for this amazing session. Thank you for my team, and thank you for everybody who joined us. So thank you, Huri, and thank you, everyone, for joining. We'd like to close with a poll just to see how everyone's doing and how you've um, taken what you've taken away from this. So Devin, take it away. Thank you, everyone, and bye. So we all